through. Hello survivors, hi family and friends. This is Roy from Bootsy Sweetheart's Guide to Life and Other Disappointing Experiences with a nice little video for beginner and veteran crocheters uh, on examining and exploring the uses of the basic chain. The chain is the foundation for most um, crochet projects. And uh, I have a fun couple of uh, bookmarks to make using the chain in just a single chain of stitches. So please stay with us and um, I hope you enjoy these projects. They make great gifts and uh, whether you are a veteran or a uh, beginner, this is fun. Just a quick time spent on the chain stitch for our beginners. I have some chunky yarn here. This is two ply. Can you see how that opens up two ply? Um, and it's fairly chunky. This hook I'm using is a 6.5 millimeter or a K hook. And you just make a slip knot. The way I do it is I just put it around my index finger. Everybody makes it different. Take my thumb, pull the yarn through, see, put the hook in. I pull the slip knot kind of tight. I just want it not to come too loose. And I want to be able to control this first loop. The first loop has to be loose enough to fit around the shank of the hook and you know of course a lot of the, the following chains will be the same size. A lot of them they all have to be. <laughs> I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. So simply grab it whichever way you can. Don't make a big science out of this. Just make sure it's comfortable. Um, I happen to have arthritis here and some of you have regular subscribers know that four weeks ago I had carpal tunnel. Look at how wonderfully that's healed. And uh, I'm back to crocheting. I had stopped for a while because of it. And pull through. Make sure you go over the shank. Pull through. Make sure you go over the shank. It should be comfortably snug every time. The same exact tension. Pull through. I'm controlling the tension with my index finger. Just the way I learned, I mean, I don't know. Now see this, see this? Okay, perfect. And pull it through. One, now see how all my stitches are the same size? If I accidentally do this, I'm gonna mess up this here. See what happens, and a lot of beginners do this. That stitch is not tight enough. So I'm gonna tighten that up. Readjust. Pull through. Now the other hap disaster that can happen on um, your foundation chain is um, if your hook slips out. Be, be careful to put the hook in exactly the way it slipped out. Because if you don't, you twist this by accident and you make a little bit, of, you see how this, everything's changed? Can you see the size of it? Everything has changed. So you want to try to keep it going in the same direction as all the others. Um, otherwise you have to pull it out. Now uh, here I'm going to adjust that tension just a little bit. See, I fixed that. Don't, don't worry too much about making a science out of this. So this is basically the chain that we're going to be doing the next several projects and videos on. Um, I love this yarn. I don't. I lost the wrapper, so I don't know what to make or anything about this. I know it's acrylic. We'll talk a little bit more. So those of you who are 
crocheters, um, you know, this was just a little tutorial for folk who were beginning. Uh, now let's move on to our bookmarks. The first project in the series of working on the chain gang <laughs> is a bookmark for kids' books. This one I happened to find a little cat button has a shank on it, but I just added it on. It looks fun hangling, dangling down. And it's simply this jumbo paper clip that I found. You've seen these, I'm sure, if you're into the journaling. Oh, I'm sorry for this uh, glare here. And this is the whole thing. But it gives you great practice in consistent chains. It also helps you use up some of your bits and pieces, and they make great gifts. Um, and the other thing is, if you're like me, your hand has to keep crocheting. They seem to just want to do this. <laughs> Even, I think, sometimes when I'm in my sleep. So this simply goes into a book. Well, let me take my Danny, Dan Danny Dunn book. It simply goes open to a page. You're done. You're going to wait. We'll do chapter 8 later. Close the book. It's simple. Bookmark. Um, one thing I would do, I would advise, I haven't done it as yet, is to secure this with glue or some kind of um, fabric glue tape. Something to keep this down here. You don't have to. But it can easily come off the loop, it can come off the clip if you're not careful. So what we're going to do with this one is I'm going to make something for our granddaughter, a bookmark. Um, but I'm going to add the dangles are going to be beads. So I found some adorable colors just for the beads. Take a look at the matching here. That I want this color to be at the bottom so I can string the beads with a um, complementary color. So I have here, where is the label? I have here the yarn I love to hate, sugar and cream. The only reason I do that is it, it, if you're making some fine stuff, it can get very difficult. It's how many ply here? It's like four ply, but it separates very easily, and you can get the, the hook caught. This is called psychedelic. I've had this a long time, so heaven knows. Um, 95 yards, four ply, worsted. Worsted, I don't have the rest of the information. It's a medium four. And for this, I'm going to use a boy F hook. I'm not sure how that corresponds to other sizes. And because I want the pink, and you'll see the pink and mauve color at the bottom, I'm going to start this bookmark way up here. And this is going to be the thread that I'm going to dangle the charms from. Again, I make my little loop over my finger. This is the way I do it. I'm comfortable with this. Bring it through. I have my slip knot. And I make a chain. So I wrap around again. Let me get some of this out of the way. This is going to be annoying, but I need to have that long color of um, pink and mauve, and you'll see. And we'll make this a little longer than the, oh, I'm sorry for the arm here. I'll make this a little longer than the, the book. It, she's in first grade, so her books are bigger, so I'll make this a little bit longer. Um, so um, she can put it in a bigger book. And simply wrap it around however you get your tension. This is, again, the way I do it. I need the two wraps. 
I don't know why. I think partly because I tend to crochet very, very tightly. And this helps me keep it loose. Again, make sure that this fits comfortably. It's not too loose. Wrap around, pull through, wrap around, pull through, wrap around, pull through, wrap around, pull through, blah, 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 blah. We could have wrap around music. And just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. And you're going to see in some subsequent videos that here's the reason why I have trouble with the sugar and spice. See that? Can you? I don't know whether you can see. There's a little. That'll. That'll settle itself in, but it just annoys me. Um, the more you do, and you'll see in the videos, by the way, that the subsequent videos, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of projects that are just fun using chains. And not so much for the fact that you're crocheting the chain. On the uh, projects that we're going to do in the future, they add a nice texture change to whatever it is. If you're making, we're going to make some flowers. Oops, almost lost you there. We'll make some flowers that will distinguish them from other flowers because they're just simply made of chains. Now you see, you can move really fast, and I guess the faster you go, the, I mean, the more comfortable you are with it, the faster you'll go. The foundation chains can be... Um, a <laughs> hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred. You'll see some <laughs> some instructions will <laughs> say chain four hundred and seventy-eight chains. In the third chain from the hook, oh no, four hundred and seventy-eight chains. All right, now look at it. in this amount of chitter chattering. Look how I think for for what I'm doing. This is probably enough. Let me see if I have my ruler handy. Um, I, oh, here it is. This one is, let's see. This is, whoops, wrong end. Just a little over 12 inches, 13 inches. And it's going to stretch. The foundation chain stretch a bit, but not uh, as much as uh, another kind of foundation chain. But this basic, see, see how much stretch there is in it, and see how consistent the loops are. This is what you want to aim for, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> okay, so now we have the end loop. I had just taken the hook out. I'm going to, oh, look at this. I happen to have the pink. I could have saved all this extra yarn. Hmm. Oh, well. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave a little extra here because we have to tie it onto the paper clip. Now, I cut that. There's so many ways of tying off, but the way I do is I cut it, I pull it through the loop, and secure it. Now that's done. And this end, we're going to secure to the paper clip. Uh, we can do that now. If Why don't we do it now while I'm, while I'm thinking of it? Because it really doesn't matter when you do it. I have a needle with a fairly large head, not that I can even thread it, so I have my little dynamite needle threader. I have no idea where I got this from, but it works well. Pull this through. Okay, it's going to be complaining. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I don't know how clear you can see this. I'm going to I'm taking this needle. By the way, this is a tapestry needle. It does not have a sharp point. You don't want, if you can help it, you don't want a very sharp needle because you don't want to split the, you don't want to split the um, strands, the ply. You want to go right through one of the stitches if you can. 
it just makes it look prettier uh, in the end. So I went around the paper clip through a stitch and that'll make it look a little neater. And the tension will hold this together. I go up about an inch, weaving it through, weaving it through. Now you see how I can just go right in between the stitch? I don't know. I'm not going through the yarn itself. I'm going through the stitches. And I'm trying to follow the weave a little so it stays kind of attractive and you don't see a whole bunch of uneven threads. Now that's going to be enough, believe it or not, that's going to be enough to hold that. You can go back if you want and weave back in. I'll do one more. Here again I'm going through a stitch, not through the ply. That's not going to go anywhere. If you're unsure you just take a little bit of any kind of clear drying glue. There's something called fray check. I use fray check sometimes. Sometimes just plain Elmer's glue. glue. Um, and just cut it off. That's attached. I have Aileen's. This is a hundred years old too, but it's still good. Quick dry tacky glue. That's helpful. Okay, you can go back there. Oh no, I need the needle. Never mind. Alright, so we have this piece done. This goes into my um, what did, schnipple? My schnipple pile. We'll talk about that at another video. <laughs> now, I have all this. I don't need all of this. Here are the beads. I have all kinds of beads. But uh, granddaughter is is in to, of course, Ariel. If you had seen one of my um, haul, thrift shop haul videos, there was a ton of stuff but hidden away in one of the piles was this adorable little mermaid pin. Not a button because it has a crown on it. So I simply took one of my charms opened up the split ring and attached the charm. So now what I'm going to do is build the dangle down. I can I don't need all this, but you know what? I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to what I'm going to do is um whoops what I'm going to do is uh, see how much I can save so I don't cut little little tiny snipples. Okay, this is see how this sugar and cream does it gets separated so easily. It can be a bothersome thing. So cut that off. Now this snipple is small. <laughs> snipple. Uh, let's leave that there friend of mine, Kerry, um, nicknamed him that. She said they've always called him that. Um, look at this. Here's the problem with old age. Even with this beautiful needle threader, I'm struggling. <laughs> I am struggling to put the thread through the uh, yarn, the needle through the eye of the needle, the needle threader. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Stop kibitzing. It's a little tight, but I like the size of this needle. All right, so we're going to work down. So I'm going to put a, let's see what I should do here. I'll do that. I'll put a fish. Then because there's no, yeah, because this is going to go around the fish, I'm going to put a second bead. And then I'm going to put... Um, so the bead, this will be like this, right? This will be like this. Bead, 
then a couple of beads. Let me put another bead here. Two beads there. Um, I don't know if that'll fit through this. It won't. Then we'll put the dolphin. And we'll put some beads that look like bubbles. How about that? Let me put three beads that look like bubbles. So we're in reverse order. A simple, what I'm going to do is, there's a bubble, one bubble, two bubbles, three bubbles. These are all cheap plastic beads. I don't know, you get them in some of the art craft stores, you know, you wind up with 30000 for, uh, ooh, this is not going through, for a lot of money. Now, all right, this is, that one is not, see, the holes and things aren't consistent when you get these cheap things, but they're useful. So I forgot now, I said three, right? Now I'm going to put the dolphin on. Oh, I like that. I'm going to put, let's see, here's a little pink one. Oop, this one's going to be tight. Oh, no. There it goes. Another pink one. Her colors are pink, as you can tell. Um, let's see. I'm going to put another one on because I want the fish to be relatively separate. Looks like it's swimming. Let's see if this one is big enough. I may have to go back into the bin Yep, that works. Okay, so now we'll put the fish on. Pardon my gorilla hands. I'm not the most um, unawkward, graceful um, crafter. I have been known to make a lot of clumsy mistakes. Oh, look at how pretty... What do you think? This is going to be the bottom of the... Oh, I like this. Okay, so now we just finish it off. This is going to be the bottom of the bookmark. Finish it off with a seahorse. And Ariel. Well, it's not Ariel. And there we go. Now we have to move all of this down to the end of our chain. Oh, I hope she likes this. There we go. Look at how pretty. Oh, you can't see it that way. Here we go. And there's a whole bunch of ways of tying this. Let me see if I can double back and go through. Now, see how this is? I mean, a lot of you have a lot of us have done the uh, beating. Oh, yeah, look. So now that's attached already. And go through this one. Okay, I'm going through the next one. It's getting tight. Nope, not going to make it. Oh, maybe. Just grab the pliers. Pull it through. They did it. Okay. Pull it all the way through. So now we're through two beads. It's getting really secure. It's getting really secure. Now we'll go through the seahorse. I'm not sure how much more we can do before it gets too tight and the color changes. We don't want the color to change. Okay, this might be the oh what did I do here? I gotta see here's where the clumsiness comes in. I got it all tangled. Yeah. So pretty. Oh I'm happy with this. Very happy with this. Let's move everything up. Pull it tight. Pull it tight. 
tight. There we go. And I think I'm going to leave it at this. So now we'll just tie a knot there. And I'll afterwards put a little dab of glue here to, um, you know what, let me cut this off so you're not so hard to see. So I'm simply going to make a regular cinch knot twice and then I'll put some glue holding that knot closed and that won't come loose. Could have actually put a knot in between each one, you know. Or I can go back down actually, I could go back down through another bead, but uh, aesthetically that would be nicer, but let me just, <clears throat> excuse me, tie this knot. Make things complicated. I'm not going to cut this string until I glue it, so I don't want to take the time now to do that. I'll cut it short, but I won't cut it close. Oh, look what happened. I was too rough with it. The fish came off. All right. Well, you get the idea. I have decided I was not going to aim for perfection since we leave that to the creator. And... Film, video, rather, things the way they happen. So, of course, I wasn't happy with the broken fish, so I took out the bottom few links and replaced them. I found another fish, and here we are with our granddaughter's bookmark. Now, you don't have to be limited by yarns or things like that. You can make bookmarks or chains out of anything you'd like. You know, I'm sure you've seen the ribbon. Um, I call it ribbon yarn. It's just a ribbon. Um, oh, where's the end? Oh, here it is. Um, for crocheting. And my last bookmark is going to be really quick. I made my loop. Didn't take any time on that. I'm just going to show you how fast this can go. I'm imagining if you have a church fair coming up or VFW craft fair or something like that, these would be fun gifts because you can make, see how fast this is, you can make several in an hour. So even if you charge a dollar or two dollars, for the organization, you're making some money. You know what the craft fairs too. My uh, thinking is, even if you're almost breaking even with some products that you're selling, and you get known for having those products, people will come back for that. And buy some other stuff in the in the craft fair. Okay, we're getting there. Look, this is very stretchy. It's pretty though, isn't it? Okay, I'll go a little bit more, and then I'm going to stop because I think it's longer. This stuff is very easy. This is a 6.5k, same 6.5k, and same as with the chunky yarn. It's just so easy. And here you can see, because of the variegated, you can see the strands and the loops. Um, but either way, with this, even if it's solid color, it's uh, easy to see the strands and the loops. So now I'm going to just tie this off. Quickly. Look at how fast that went. That went really fast. Um, I'm going to put a big paper clip on this one because I like the big ones. Oops. Do this. I have a needle. Where is the needle? Oh, over here. 
I have a needle that'll um, accommodate the whole width of the ribbon. And again, this is a tapestry needle, so it doesn't have a very, very sharp point. And especially with ribbon, you don't want to split the ribbon in the middle. It just isn't attractive when you uh, put the th thing together. So here I'm going to go in between the ribbons. I'm not going to split the ribbon. Oh, call me a liar. Um, if I can help it. <laughs> Again, I'm going to go through. I don't want to split the ribbon if I can avoid it. There we go. It's right there. And follow that all the way up a little ways. This one probably would be will benefit with some glue. Even though this is pretty... Oh, 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 do as I say, not as I do. I split that pink ribbon. You can see it almost... It almost made it a hole in it, a frayed hole. But it, it's very easy. This ribbon is very sheer. Okay. And that's going to be good enough for now. That'll hold. And then I'll put some glue there. Let me clip this off. I'll wait to trim it more until when the glue dries. Now, some of you who have been with me saw um, my thrift store uh, haul. Look what I look what was in it. Is this beautiful? There was so much stuff in it. If you are inclined to go back and take a look at that video, it's two parts. It was so much. It was really three parts, but that, I want to save some of it for my first live stream. That seems like a fun exploration to do live because I'm just as surprised as, as uh, can be when I open it up. Now see, it's very easy. Look at how pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Again, come up through the holes between the stitches, trying to not split the ribbon. There we did, that one went through. Okay, I could probably even do better if I went backwards using the eye. Where am I? There I am. Using the eye is instead, it'll be less likely to pierce between the threads on the ribbon. Yeah, this is the best way to do it. Of course, you don't want to get tangled like that. Yeah, this is the way to do it. For sure. There we go. There we go. Again, this, this really would benefit by being glued. Now, the other thing you don't want to do is go too far when you're weaving too far away from the last stitch because that oh, that will definitely look sloppy um, but this this is fine this should be it that's not going anywhere at all I'll cut this and that will be glued in later on and now I have a beautiful adult theme. This again I'm going to glue. I'll probably use that, what is it, E6000? So take your reference book, whatever it is, and put your bookmark in. And I have a really beautiful bookmark. Um, this one's long. I could shorten it. Um, I like it long. I like it dangly. You know, don't be ignored, Bootsy. Don't be ignored. So I hope you like this little activity. The video is longer than I would have liked it to have been. Now just to show you a repeat of what we've got here. We've got this nice bookmark. I took um, regular weight 
um, Super Saver yarn. I'm going to glue this, by the way. And made a quick chain, little paper clip, a small paper clip. Put two buttons on the bottom. That's neat. By the way, these don't have to be bookmarks. You can put these as dangles. It could do both ends and put them on your kid's backpack, my backpack. Uh, you can make them danglies from almost anything you want. They don't have to be bookmarked. From that haul that I got from my thrift shop, I had this beautiful pen. Some sort of bug. It's supposed to be a butterfly maybe, but it doesn't, it looks like a bug. <laughs> and I use again the variegated. Um, and I have the one that we made with the cat. And I have granddaughters. Um, there, I have another one that I can't seem to find offhand. But this is, oh, I have, look, I just keep making these. Um, in future videos, you'll see that we're going to combine these chains in lots of different ways to make embellishments. And you don't have to be a great uh, crocheter, and you don't have to sit there and think about it. You just make a chain as long as you need, and then you can work on that craft later on. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's a fun project. Please check out some of my other videos. My next video in this line is going to be, again, bookmarks, but a little bit more um, artistic, a little finer. Um, and to give beginners some practice using um, much thinner yarn, much lighter weight um, yarn, actually uh, um, thread, crochet thread and um, um, floss. And that'll be fun. I have a special project coming up, um, hopefully really soon. So again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video. And uh, as Nancy Zeman says, Bye for now.